Right, boss, onto your wish list, which I've uh, got here. And we'll start with uh, engine transmission, see as we stood round back. And I should just mention, if you haven't seen the other uh, video before of uh, Richard's uh, opinions on his 420, go and check that one out as well. But uh, for this one, we'll crack on with this, the 420S. So, engine transmission. We'll start with engine. Yeah, yeah. Got a tad more donkeys, this one. Yeah, she's uh, got a bit of a jump up. Uh, up to 173 horse now. Right, and what uh, were, what's yours? It's 140. All right, so you've got a little bit more to play with. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a fair jump up. And for a lot of the work around the yard, you, you don't really need a lot of power. Yeah. But it's just having that bit more power. You're not working the machine as hard all the time. And Yeah. But the difference where it will come, and like where you get wagon loads of feed and you have to shove them, kind of tip them in one spot and shove them into a bunker or out of the way where you, so you can still get around stuff. Um, and you get it pushing an arctic load of feed, it'll do it in a couple of bucketfuls. Yeah. So yeah. over our machine, it's, yeah, it's it's got some serious go about I guess it. Is it fairly noticeable, the extra power? Yeah. 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 You, you fairly notice it and yeah, along with the, the gearbox you get going down the road, it, it's it's moving. Right. It, it picks its feet up a bit. Oh, it, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it'd be impressive. I bet it'd be impressive to see it on the pit with a 12-foot fork on the front of it. Yeah. Because I bet it can shove some grass away. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, last time, you you know, we were talking about your 420. Mm -hmm. Its limitation was the climbing bit. Yeah. Do you think this has well and truly overcome that limitation? Yeah, I would say so. This is now an eight-speed transmission as opposed to the six in ours. Yeah. And now, whereas the the 320S will have torque locking gears two to six, this has torque locking every gear. Right. And there's a lot more overlap. So driving around the yard, you can pull away in third, fourth, or fifth gear. It doesn't bother which one you're in, and it's just yeah, completely different. Yeah. It's smooth. Previously changing from third gear to fourth gear was like it's like a fair old jump. Where yeah. now it's just. Yeah, seamless. And are all the steps between each gear, are they all sort of fairly even? Like, yeah, you know? yeah, it, it, it spread the gears out a lot better. Before, they were, there was quite, some of the gears, had, some of the gears were fairly close and then some of them had a bit more jumps. So they've kind of slotted. In that, between three and four, there was a big jump. So they've virtually slotted a gear in there. Yeah. And obviously, it's, it, they're all different ratios now, but yeah, it's, yeah. It feels like they filled that gap. Yeah, in yeah, the definitely. Yeah. And maybe one at the top as well. They've just stuck one at the top yeah, as well. Yeah, she uh, it, it fairly moves on down the road. Our machine at 40k, you're fairly well hanging on to it. Yeah. Where this at, you're a passenger. Yeah, you're a passenger <laughs> you're a passenger at 40k an hour. Not yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah. but like we drag fertilizer and straw down the road and yeah, it, it manages to pull 40k with a dolly trailer with 10 ton behind it. But this thing it's quite happy sat at 53k. Yeah. And it's it's smooth, it's like you're driving a tractor. You just yeah. And you feel like you've got like total control oh, yeah, yeah, over yeah. the steering. Yeah. Where whereas I was at 40k is quite twitchy, this at 50 is smooth. And then the the uh, the auto you know the auto function in the box is that quite you know smooth and progressive? Yeah yeah. Um so gears one to four are manual changing, so right. that's on your joystick. Once you put it into fifth, it'll then yeah, seamlessly go through five, six, seven, eight. So again, they've stuck with top half of the yeah. gearbox being the automatic gears. Yeah, the um, engineer from JCB who came in and did the walk around with us, he said they had a Big long... shout out to Ed. Yeah. <laughs> they spent quite a bit of time sort of arguing where should they put the auto, f where should they put auto and manual shifting? Yeah. And they kind of said five because you don't want to be just like nicely moving around the yard, give it a little bit more throttle and all of a sudden it starts jumping up through the gears. Yeah. That's something it also does now. JCB have given it some fancy branding, but it it doesn't just look right. I'm doing this speed now. I'll go in the next gear. It looks at your your revs and your load and everything going on. To so if you're booting it, yeah, it'll it'll take longer to change up the gears. If you're just nicely creeping ah, around the yard, you. it'll jump up so, the gears. A lot like driving an automatic car. Then yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. knows when right. We're in a bit of an hurry. Yeah. It's just stamped on throttle. Let's have lots of revs. Yeah, and then you know build the revs before it goes to the next gear. Exactly. Right. So before I was flying around with the the muck grab, just nicely cruising away, not a lot of revs on, yeah. and it'll change up at lower revs. So you you're getting on. You're not revving. You're burning less diesel. And the other thing as well now, um, whereas previously on the 320s. You'd be going up through the gears and it'd go like fourth gear, fifth, then it'd go into torque locking fifth, and then it'd go into sixth and then torque locking sixth. So you'd you'd be like, yeah, it felt like you're going through 18 gears. Yeah. Whereas now it'll go, you could put it in first gear in torque lock 
and change up all the way through because there's that much overlap without ever disengaging torque lock. Got you, so it can stay in it more of the time. Yeah, exactly. So it's for, for road work, it should, roading on the clamp, you should be able to shift through gears and, and never have that kind of, all of a sudden, like a bit of a loss in drive before it gets that mechanical yeah. going. That's it. And uh, before, with the, in, the, in the last video, you were, you were saying with the 420, you often, round the yard, you're driving fourth gear and above yeah so you got your automatic uh, gears yeah do you do that with this do you sort of stay in fifth gear and above with this yeah it, it, we've been a bit mixed really because it's quite happy you're fast enough around the clamp fourth gear is good for setting off mm. where previously for fourth gear is kind of the new one in between the three and four in, yeah. in the 420 um and that would be yeah just as we said it'd just be a bit a bit too high to get going mm. if you're only sort of going from here here over there with a the bucket to tip in the feeder yeah it was just a bit much and then you're going a bit too fast but third was a bit too slow so you, that that new fourth gear does does um, properly in the middle yeah yeah and then gap. and then fifth is similar it's it's a yeah it, it takes a bit of revs to get it going but you're soon just cruising around the yard low revs at a fair whack <laughs> <laughs> And then while we talk about engines and efficiency and things mm -hmm. like that, uh, I think one of your items on your wish list, yes, auto stop, stop, well, auto stop, really. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this has auto stop. Um, so, yeah, as we've done several times, you jump out of the machine, you're only going to be out of it for 20 seconds. But suddenly so a cow opens a gate, you have to go rushing off around the corner. Mm. And then you buy the brew room, so oh, I'll just go make myself a brew and you come back and oh, it's 20 minutes since that return, that we're left running. Yeah. So yeah, it'll, it'll shut itself off um, after three minutes. Right. Or you can set it at intervals up to sort of half an hour. Yeah. Um, but we just get it set at three minutes and it um, it's surprising how often it does not does knock off really. Um, yeah. And it's just saving diesel, less hours on the machine, which obviously yeah. every hour that you clock on it, whether it's working or not, it's depreciating and and costing you money. Well, so. that's it. What were you saying you were kind of wasting last time in terms of engine hours? Was it an extra 100 per year? Like that? Yeah, when we looked at it, you were sort of 30%, 30 idle time, but then you kind of think, well, there'll be some times you'll be waiting for something or mm. there is times where you're sat on the seat and yeah. it's at tick over or you're letting it warm up or you're letting it cool down. Yeah. But yeah, the, the amount of time that it does spend, sort of, you just jump out for a minute. If you do that 15 times a day, it's, uh, it soon adds up to a lot of hours a year. Grand, right, well I think that's uh, that's enough on engine transmission. Let's move on to probably the important bit, the hydraulics and handling. Yeah, yeah.